Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to Tinkering with Table Views. Now, in this video, we're going to be adding our table view, populating it with some basic data, and running it on our simulator. So let's get started. First thing first, we're going to go ahead and add a table view onto our view. Now over here in the objects pane, again, make sure that you have this right view open. We're going to go ahead and search for table view, okay? And drag this table view onto our view. Make sure that it fills up the entire screen. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it. Fantastic. So this is our table view. Now, the next thing you have to do is specify to Xcode where its data source and delegate is going to be. So right now we're just focused on the data source. So what I want you to do is go ahead and control click on the table view, make sure you get this blue line, go up to this yellow icon and let go. By doing so, we can go ahead and connect the table views data source to our view controller and tell Xcode that, hey, if you wanna figure out how to populate this table view, go check out the view controller dot Swift. Okay. The next thing we have to do is go ahead and add an IB outlet for our table view to access our table view, to get its properties, all that good stuff. We need to go ahead and add an outlet. So what I'm doing is I just went ahead, opened up the assistant editor, control clicked on our table view, let go on our view controller, and then created an outlet called table view. So hit connect. Fantastic. So now we have our table view and we went ahead and added our data source to our view controller. But to actually get those methods in our view controller, we need to add the UI table view data source protocol. If you guys remember protocols back in our Swift series, protocols were basically a sort of structure that had set functions where when you implemented a protocol, you had to have had those functions. So when we call UI table view data source, what we're saying is that, hey, this class, this view controller class is going to have the methods required to populate our table view. And in our scenario, there's two specific methods. The first method is going to be, um, if you go ahead and type table view, it's going to be number of rows in section. And what this function does is it tells us, Hey, how many rows do you guys want in your table view? So in our case, let's go ahead and return three. The second function is going to be cell for row at index path. Okay. Again, it's called cell for row at index path. This one over here. And all this one does is it tells, um, Xcode, Hey, for every single cell in my table view, this is what I want you to populate it with. Okay. So these are our two functions and our second function, we have to return a UI table view cell. Okay. So before we do that, we need to register our cell in our view to load function. And the way we can do that is we can say self dot table view dot register. And then the class is going to be UI table view cell dot self. And our reuse identifier over here is going to go ahead and be cell. All right. So we went ahead and registered the table view cell class so that what we can do now is over here in our table view, we need to go ahead and create a cell object, populate it with some data and return that cell object. So I'm going to say var cell, which is going to be type UI table view cell is equal to self dot table view dot DQ reusable cell. Okay. So this is a new concept that some people don't know about. And what DQ reusable cell allows you to do is it allows you to basically when you have a bunch of items in your table view, right? Let's say you have a hundred different rows. When you have a hundred different rows, you need to go ahead and say that, Hey, when I'm dealing with my table view, I don't want to load all of those hundred rows. Instead, I only want to load the rows that I'm showing. So what DQ reusable cell allows us to do is it basically says that, Hey, only show the cells that the user wants to see and all the other cells in our list DQ that don't store them in memory. So when the user scrolls, those cells get added back and they're now in memory. So it's very efficient when you're dealing with a lot of data. Again, we only have three rows right now, so it doesn't really matter. But honestly, when you're, whenever you're dealing with table views, make sure you have DQ reusable cell. So the parameter was with identifier. I went ahead and said cell. And now I went ahead and said as UI table view cell. Notice I use an exclamation mark. I'm basically saying that, Hey, whatever it is, it has to be a UI table view cell. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to say cell dot text label dot text is equal to hello world. All right. When you're dealing with the normal cell, the basic UI table view cell, all of these UI table view cells has a text label, a pre given text label that you can modify. You can add text to. And all we're saying is the text label for a cell cell.text label should have some text and that text should be hello world. 
So I went in and added an exclamation mark because Xcode wasn't sure if our cell is going to have a text label or not. By adding that exclamation mark, we're saying that yes, that does exist. Last but not least, we have the return cell and that's it guys. That is the most basic table view that you can create. All we did is we added our table view to our view. We created a data source. We told Xcode that, hey, our view controller should be our UI table view data source. We added the U table view IB outlet, and then we added the two table view functions, number of rows in section and cell for row at index path. Okay. Now, if you note over here, all we did over here is we created or registered the table view cell and we gave it an identifier, which was cell. And then we accessed that identifier over here and we created the cell object. We gave ourselves some text and we returned the cell. So now if you go ahead and run our shopping list application, we're going to go ahead and see a table view with three rows and each row will say hello world. So let's give it a few seconds over here. We have our simulator. It's running our application and let's give it a world. Awesome. Fantastic. So this is exactly what we wanted, right? We have our shopping list. This is our table view. We have three hello worlds. Great job. So again, this is a very basic table view. There's a lot more we still have to do, but hopefully this basic table view made sense to you guys and you had a lot of fun making this. Anyways, if you have any questions, you know, what is register? What is self reuse identifier? If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to ask. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.